Welcome back. I'm Connie. I'm here in the kitchen and we're at Treetop Lodge. Today we've got an extra special day. We actually have a group of people that are coming in in a little while and they're going to have a painting party. And I'm going to prepare some savory things, some sweet things, have a little bit of wine if they like, and we'll see what's going on in there. But in the meantime, I'm going to put together some simple but tasty things that we'll be serving to our guests. We're going to start with, this is a, this is, I'm giving away another one of my secrets. You want to do kind of an elevated dessert, but you don't have a lot of time. This is how this came about. I had a box of chocolate pudding in the pantry, Hershey brand, which is really nice and chocolatey. And I'm just going to make that up according to label instructions. That's just the box of pudding and two cups of cold milk. And I'm going to set that in the fridge. And then we'll go on to something else. And then we'll come back to this and do the elevating. So that's basically all that is right there. That's just your basic pudding mix but it's what we do with it that makes it so good. So I'm just going to set that in here. If I can, and hope, there we go. All right. Now I've got to, uh, we're going to make up some bruschetta today. And first I need to prepare my toast. I'm going to just pull out my handy dandy vintage Hamilton Beach electric knife, which just makes things like this go so much more quickly. Let's have a basic loaf of, this is French bread. Sometimes I get the actual baguette bread, but this is a little bit bigger. And we're just going to do this left-handed and see how it works. Not bad. I'm going to take this, drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, throw it in the oven for a few minutes to crisp up, and then we'll add a topping, and we'll have nice little savory bites. Now, as I said, the folks that are coming up today are going to be painting, so I don't want to be creating food that's going to be hard to eat. So, doing some of my favorite things, which are kind of a one bite small plate style. So we'll get some of those started. Uh, turn the oven on. And while we're doing this, I'm going to drizzle it. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on it. And then we'll let them toast up for us. We have been so busy up here. We've had so much going on. Painting party, um, We've had wine dinners, and Valentine's Day was wonderful. There we go. We expanded the dining room that night to 32 guests, and it was, it was great. We had so much fun. And we have a beer dinner coming up next weekend. We had one in February, and it was such a big success, which is, works the same way as our wine dinners. Seven-course dinner plus appetizers. Um, and Dean will do the pairings with all sorts of different beers. Now, I'm not a beer person, so if I get the terminology wrong, but the different craft beers and lagers and ales and different things that will pair up with all the individual foods. And we will even have, we'll do, I think I've talked about this before because I did demonstrate on the show when we did the salad dressing made with beer instead of vinegar. And that was fun. And we're going to do that again. I don't know. What we're using yet, I'll talk to Dean this week. And again, I'll do the sorbet with a beer. The menu this week, the main course is bone-in caramelized balsamic pork chops. So we'll see what he's got to recommend to go with that as far as the sorbets and such. Now I'm just going to use some of my sea salt. Here we go. Very technical stuff here. There we go. This is Brittany sea salt. It's got a nice, nice full flavor without using, because you could see I didn't use a lot. And I'm just going to throw these in the oven and let them toast. And we will start. 
I think we'll start working on some deviled eggs. Now I know how terribly exciting it is to watch me hard boil and peel eggs, but I did it before you got here. And today I want to do something a little bit different as far as flavor. And I've lost my Dijon. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I'll see if I have a bottle in here. If I don't, we'll make yet another adjustment. All right, I'm gonna step over here for a minute. Just look at my empty table. I had the Dijon in my hand just a minute ago. There it is. All right. So, need to grab a bowl. And a knife. Now normally when the, the basic deviled eggs, which are great and I love them, you use mayo and yellow mustard. Today we are going to use sour cream and Dijon. Be a little bit more savory and I think it'll be wonderful. So start getting our eggs out. I'm seeing all these things on the internet these days about easy way to peel hard-boiled eggs. I've tried them all. There is no easy way to peel hard-boiled eggs. The one where you put it in a jar and shake it all over, yeah, it takes the shell off, takes most of the white off, and leaves the shell in your egg. So <laughs> take an extra moment and do it right. There we go. And I was, I'm gonna start talking about this now. This is coming up in June. We are going to have our first unicorn festival. Jam-packed day, um, field day for grown-ups. So really, it isn't a kid's thing. We're not going to have face painting and all that. We're going to have an all-day scrap. We're going to have an all-day craft trade where you can bring all your excess craft supplies to whatever crafts you like, and you can buy and sell and trade those. We're going to have the folks from Canine Stray Rescue here that day. We won't be bringing the dogs up, but they'll be here to talk about their organization and uh, you know, one of my fa favorite groups of people. And we're going to have, we're going to film two episodes of Kitchen that day. And we're going to do lunch and dinner and people will be involved in the film, the cooking and the filming and then, you know, have lunch and dinner. We're going to have a wine tasting from three to five. We're going to have beer, uh, bourbon and cigars outside from six to eight in the evening. And we're going to have a wedding that day performed by a unicorn. So that's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. That's June 25th, and watch Facebook, and I'll talk about that in the next segment. We're changing our Facebook page, so we'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm going to finish this. When you come back, we'll start mixing it up and refilling our eggs. So come on back. All right, here we are in front of American Legion Post 108 in Oxford. Now, every Friday between 12 and 8.30, they serve up some of the best fish in Michigan. Follow me inside. We're going to take a look around the post. All right, here we are now on the hall side of the post where you can get tables for anywhere to 6 to 30 people. And before or after you're done eating, take a walk around and browse through the second largest military museum in the state of Michigan. All right, now we're over on the restaurant side of the post where most of the fun happens, as you can see behind me. They've got darts, pool tables, 50-50 raffles, and any kind of fish you can think of, bait, cod, walleye, combo place, all right here at your beck and call. Okay, we're back. I've got the eggs peeled. Now when I make deviled eggs, especially if I'm making a large quantity, I always make a couple extra because there's usually one that doesn't peel right or it breaks when it's cooking. But I do that purposely to have extra yolk because I like to really refill the, e the eggs up good. So 
We're going to break up. I mean, I think everybody's made deviled eggs. The thing today, these days, is just to make them with variations. And the toppings, I mean, you can make the de basic deviled egg and then just do all sorts of different toppings. So today I think we're going to do some bacon, some shaved parm, things like that. So there we go. Real simple. Quick dash of salt and pepper. And now the elusive Dijon. This is one of those things that's, you know, I'm always talking about exact measure, but I add a little bit at a time of each because, what do we say? Once it's in there, you can't take it out. So I've got some Dijon. It gives you that mm, full savory flavor. And now we're just going to keep blending our ingredients back and forth till we have a nice consistency on the eggs. So you need a little bit more there. Don't want to overwork them. Don't want to turn it into egg dust. Get some more Dijon going. Boy, and today I'm going to make all this food, and then the people that are coming are going to eat it. So I don't have to worry about either taking it home or sending it back to the studio or wasting it. Because this is actually cooking with a purpose today. There we go. Oh, that smells good. <laughs> There we go. I love deviled eggs. I love them in the summer, but I like them even more when it's cold. Today is April 3rd, and anybody that looks outside knows what kind of weather we've been having the last couple days. But it's Michigan. You know, you're going to get snow in April. It's just going to happen. There's not much sense in complaining about it. All right, quick tip. If you have any of these little scoops for cookie mixes and such, easiest way to make nice, neat, tidy deviled eggs. I used to do it with the two spoons and make a quenelle and all that, but especially if you're making a large quantity, this just, see how quickly this goes? And you can really overfill them. And who doesn't love deviled eggs? Later, before I serve them, I'll transfer them to a, a proper platter. But that's it. Sometimes um, when I'm doing this, I'll, I'll use a variation. I'll put some dill mustard in, maybe a little shot of lemon juice. Really, it's just all about where your tastes take you. And if you don't, doesn't turn out the way you like it, then you do it different the next time. But I make a lot of these. I have um, our couple that was married here in August, Krista and Sean, are, I think I've told you are expecting a baby in May, or no, in June. And the shower is going to be here in May. Krista sent me a text the other day. Could we? I was just watching, looking at my wedding pictures, and now I've got a craving for deviled eggs. Could we have deviled eggs at the shower too? I said, of course. So there we go. And now, see, I didn't lick my fingers. Smart. And earlier I had some couple strips of bacon left, so I crumbled them up. We'll put some bacon on here. Some of them get bacon. Bacon's good on everything. And I will reach in here and see what I've got. I think I've got, yep, some parsley. Got some shaved parm. And then I can just set this aside until I'm ready to plate it up. It's nice, fresh. Oh, nice, fresh shaved parm. There's been a lot of controversy lately about the um, grated cheeses and such that you buy in the containers and... I wasn't quite sure how accurate it was, but then I saw a statement from one of the cheese companies that said, well, that's their industry standard. <clears throat> Frankly, not too crazy about the way they do that, so I went back to nice, fresh. If I can't grate it myself, then I get the nice, freshly grated. And we'll throw some parsley on there for color and for taste, because parsley just tastes and smells like springtime, which it will be soon. I have every faith. And there we have deviled eggs. And again, you know, I did wash all the produce before you got here. You can hear noises out in the dining room. Kayla's getting set up for the painting. So there we go. We've got some deviled eggs topped with some bacon, some parm. Don't want to waste this last bit of bacon, so let's just go ahead. And... The nice thing about doing it this way is 
and things that fall off to the side, when I put them on the platter, it'll be neat until people dive in. All right, got to check my toast here. It's coming. Thought I was going to forget, didn't you? Wouldn't be the first time. All right, so now the deviled eggs are done, and we will start mixing up some fun stuff to put on our bruschetta. This is just a block of cream cheese that I've had sitting out softening. You see me do this all the time. It's a real simple thing. But I'm also looking at the combinations of the various things I'm putting together. I want to do a little bit of everything. So I'm going to add some of my tubed Italian herbs. There we go. I'm going to throw that on the floor. I think we use some sea salt on here. And the pepper, I ground this myself and then put it in a shaker so it's always handy by the stove. For some reason, grinding it yourself, you just get a fuller flavor, nicer fragrance. So we're going to mix this up. And again, I just added a little bit of the herbs and I can always put more in, which I think we will. And I got some fresh tomatoes over there. I think we'll dice those up and put them on top. Oh, goodness. Oh, I can smell that. And it smells so good. I really have to figure out a way to hook the uh, fragrances up so that you guys, when you're watching this on TV, can smell them too. It's pretty cool. So, that's the start for that. All simple components. Ooh, why not throw some cheese in there too? Nice fresh Parmigiano. And that's ready to go on our toast, topped with the tomatoes. So what else have we got going on? We got Euchre Games on Saturday nights. Not every Saturday night, so you have to check for the date. A lot of fun. We just play all over the house. You switch partners all night long until we just decide we're done playing. And then you have a choice. The winner has a choice at the end of a cash pot based on the number of players or gift certificates to the lodge. And that's been a lot of fun. And last time I even got to play because we had odd numbers. So, all right, I'm going to set this aside. We'll come back. We're going to finish up the mousse. And we're going to do some chocolate dipping thing and put our bruschetta together. So come on back with me in a few. And let's finish this up and get our tray ready for our guests. Canine Stray Rescue does just that. Rescue stray dogs for new families. But they need your help. Become a volunteer at Canine Stray Rescue League of Michigan. Take dogs for walks, help them socialize with others, and help them get adopted. Fill out an application and help a family add a new member today. I got the uh, basic chocolate pudding out. It's all nice and set up. I want to break it up a little bit. I should probably have that over here. I can see it better. Nice and rich and dark. And oh, I went to Hershey, Pennsylvania years ago. The air smells like this. It's wonderful. Now I'm going to add some low fat ricotta cheese, which I know sounds kind of strange, but it plays off the sweetness in this. And again, even though this isn't my favorite thing, I had use of some whipped topping, so I'm going to use that because I don't like to waste. And we're just going to whip that in. And I've kind of done this on the show before, I think, variations on a theme. I think I did it once with jalapeno relish in it. Look at that. Is that beautiful? And if you use an electric mixer on this, you can really whip it up real light. And now for just a little bit of texture, I'm going to do some mini chocolate chips. Mix them in, and then I'm just going to set this back in the fridge until I'm ready to serve it. 
And there you have, is that gorgeous? Served this at free meals the other night. It was a huge hit. All right, so I'm just going to pop that back in the fridge. We'll put some... What a mess. Oh, I'm hearing voices. I love it. This is the fun time for me. I'm in the lodge here all by myself getting things ready, and then I hear voices. People are starting to arrive for whatever occasion. Here we go. Mmm. The toast is still warm, and that bit of cream cheese and herb hits that, and the fragrance comes up. And... See, you couldn't, I couldn't do a whole show without chopping something. So I know how you love to watch me chop. <laughs> so we'll put some fresh tomato on there. Look at that. There we go. Yeah, I'll finish the whole tray up later. This is just to show you guys what I'm doing. There we go. A little bit of parsley. And that will be our bruschetta. And then, I've lost my towel, so I'll use this one. Fun thing I was going to try today. Complete experiment. Let's let that sit there for right now. So you're seeing the process. This is not a polished Connie's Kitchen where everything's ready to roll and we are going to try okay I've lost my toothpicks been dipping a lot of things in chocolate people love things dipped in chocolate so earlier today I baked some cookies just oatmeal chocolate chip we're just going to dredge those through the chocolate and we can set those right on here for right now so they set up. Look at see the chocolate is melted just in the double boiler. Easiest thing in the world to do. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. And then, believe it or not, I'm going to dip some grapes in chocolate. Put it on a toothpick. Dredge it through the chocolate. <laughs> you are more than welcome to take a tour. <laughs> oh, can I get down where I can reach it? And there you have it. We've put together some very simple but tasty little bites that our guests in a little while will be enjoying. And I will probably add some of my grilled cheese sandwiches because that was a special request, but you've seen me make those. Big hit. Every time we have a euchre party, I have to make bacon wrap dates and grilled cheese sandwiches. But that's nice too that I'm making things that people like and they, they hear about them and they request them. That's a compliment. So there you go. We've got sweet, we've got savory, we've got chocolate. Everybody that comes up here, when I ask them what they'd like on the menu, well, I don't know, but make sure you have chocolate. So I've been playing more and more with my good old double boiler here. It's just the easiest thing in the world to do. chocolate covered nuts all sorts of different things so it's not a pretty display yet it will be when I get ready to plate it up but that gives you a rough idea of what I do when I'm getting ready for a gathering of people coming up to enjoy whatever whether it's dinner or a party or whatever it is and, and if it's your event if it's your wedding or your birthday or your shower or even your scrapbooking day or your quilting or your knitting whatever it is we talk you tell me what you'd like if it's, if it's something specific or something you want me to create, because it's all about you. When you come up to the lodge, it's all about you. And I try to make things for you that you will enjoy and that I enjoy doing. So it works out for both of us. So there you have it. I think I'll do some cheese and crackers on a tray, some nice fresh strawberries. We'll have our deviled eggs. And once I put this all in my big fancy silver serving tray, 
I think we'll have a nice little uh, snack set out for folks to enjoy. So in the meantime, call me at 248-933-4579. Watch our Facebook page. It is changing. We're changing it over to a business page where we can more efficiently post our events and such. Uh, you can always email me at stormy395 3958 at att.net. And we do have our website, treetoplodgeoxford.com. So come and visit those places and then come and visit me here and have a good time. We're going to have a good time this afternoon, I can tell already. So once I get this all on the tray, I can go out and greet the guests and see what they're up to and show them around the place. And uh, nice weather's coming, the grounds are opening up. Treetop Lodge is the place to be. Come up and visit, watch the show, tell your friends. In the meantime, have fun, stay warm until the sun comes back out. Be nice to one another and I will see you soon. At Oakland County Parks and Recreation, we value what you value. Family relationships, community connections, good health, environmental stewardship, and economic stability. Oakland County residents and businesses have invested in preserving nearly 7,000 acres of parkland. Since 1966, 13 parks and golf courses have been acquired maintained and improved. Oakland County Parks and Facilities are made possible by millage funds supported by Oakland County residents. For a home valued at $200,000, the homeowner pays less than $25 per year to support the Oakland County Parks. With every generation, families create lifelong memories at Oakland County's award-winning parks. From exciting summer escapades and stories around the campfire to brisk fall walks on wooded trails and snowy winter outings, the outdoors beckons year-round. It's time to get up, get out, and get going at the Oakland County Parks. Active recreation options abound. Cross-country ski or mountain bike on tree-lined trails. Scale the rock climbing wall. Get your kicks with soccer at several sports fields. Row or paddle a boat on four picturesque inland lakes. It's an easy journey. Most parks are just a short drive away. A quick tip, all our parks and golf courses end in Oaks. To find your favorite, just go to DestinationOakland.com. Here we are in front of American Legion Post 108 in Oxford. Now, every Friday between 12 and 8.30, they serve up some of the best fish in Michigan. Follow me inside. We're going to take a look around the post. All right, here we are now on the hall side of the post where you can get tables for anywhere to 6 to 30 people. And before or after you're done eating, take a walk around and browse through the second largest military museum in the state of Michigan. All right, now we're over on the restaurant side of the post where... Most of the fun happens, as you can see behind me. They've got darts, pool tables, 50-50 raffles, and any kind of fish you can think of, bait, cod, walleye, combo place, all right here at your beck and golf.